please be seated. God bless you. Uh, this is the fifth year of uh, this Black History Month celebration, and I want to specially thank the Dean and the Chapter of Manchester Cathedral for the hospitality towards us in welcoming us here. Um, and also, I want to particularly acknowledge the Diocese of Manchester and the friendship of Bishop Nigel McCulloch, um, who have really uh, warmly received us in their midst. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. We also have Pentecostal, Methodist, Anglican, Roman Catholic, Ethiopian Orthodox, and other clergy here today. And at this ecumenical occasion, I'm pleased to be able to bring you greetings as a trustee and director of Churches Together in England and deputy moderator of the CTE Forum. And as well, on behalf of my fellow co-presidents of Greater Manchester Churches Together. I know that the Reverend Graham Kent, the County Ecumenical Development Officer, will be bringing you greetings from all the churches much later. And from time to time, people ask me, they say, what are you? Are you Anglican? Are you Roman Catholic? Someone the other day thought that I might be Coptic Orthodox. <laughs> Depending what sort of mood I'm in, I say, well, um, I'm Pentecostal, uh, but I'm also Pente Anglican and Pente Roman Catholic and Pente Orthodox. Yeah. I'm a Pente Christian. <laughs> For there is only one church, but there was only one Christ crucified on one cross. There was only one grave. There was only one resurrection and only one Pentecost. Hallelujah! So it is good that we are together here in this place and in this way. Today I want to say a little bit about the APA, uh, but also to speak uh, more directly to those who are being ordained and licensed. And so I want to, this to be titled, No More Strangers. Can you just say that with me? No more strangers. The word stranger means the one whom we don't really know, you know, the one who is the outsider, who's not really a part of us, the one who is a foreigner just visiting or maybe even living in our midst, the, the one who doesn't belong, the one who doesn't take part in the activities uh, of the community, uh, who is kept from knowing what the others know and understand, the one who is not part of the family and therefore not part of the covenant. And there are many words used for stranger in the Bible. And God's holy word tells us, as his people, to be good to strangers. And to remember that when we were strangers to God, walking in strange ways, doing strange things, living in strange lives, in strange situations, God never forsook us and was always there beside us helping us to lead us back to himself in Christ and sometimes we fail to recognize the blessings in those who are sent to us in Jesus Christ God comes himself among his people only to be treated as a stranger and rejected by the rulers and in John 13 and 20, Jesus says, He who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. And in Scripture, hospitality is often shown to the strangers as a sign of honor. And you know, when you receive a stranger, the stranger is no longer a stranger, but becomes a guest. And being a guest is the first step on the road to becoming a part of the community. Strangers often prosper in the places where they go. 
I remember Joseph and Moses who were strangers in Egypt and who became rulers there, and Jacob and his sons who came as strangers into Egypt and became a great nation there. So part of the destiny of the stranger is in their ability to become a part of the place and the people that God has sent them to. And today again we mark the awards of the Order of St. Hadrian of Canterbury and St. Hadrian the African came to this land as a stranger and found acceptance of his ministry here and lived and worked here and at the end of his earthly life his remains were buried here. So a stranger can be made a stranger by those they meet, but a stranger can also make themselves a stranger by refusing to become a part of the land. It is normal and it is right to test a stranger. We want to be sure that the stranger is not a threat to our communities, but our morality and our spirituality is still measured more in our attitude to strangers than the way we treat those whom we already know and love. These British Isles have welcomed many strangers over the centuries, and most of them today are part of the many peoples who are now the native population of this land. So today, we want to say to you that you are not just being ordained here. What is happening here is symbolic of your acceptance by those whom we represent and by the wider society we want to believe God with you that from today you will no longer ever be strangers in this land or wherever God may send you. Amen. But, but that strangeness does not only occur between those who are new to each other. Strangeness is also a real problem for our communities when we cease to truly care for one another and we become strangers to one another, even in our homes, even in our neighborhoods and our communities. And it's a funny thing, but as we grow into larger and larger cities and more and more of us come living closer and closer together, we become more and more strangers to one another. This is an even worse kind of strangeness, that people are lonely in the midst of many others. I sense and I feel that the more individualized the society becomes, the lonelier people are. For the I cannot become bigger than the we because the I does not exist without the we. Without us all, we individually are nothing. We need one another to be what God has called us to be. And we need one another to become what God needs us to be. Individual, individualism that's shown as courage, for example, for, in, in the face of danger to save others is a wonderful thing. But when the needs of the individual are routinely put above the needs of the community, the morality of the community is eroded. Sin is no longer called sin. And before you know it, anything goes because no one really cares for anyone but themselves. I may be old fashioned, but I remember a time when Great Britain still expected every man, every woman, and even every child to do their duty for God and for their country. So we've already had two types of strangeness or strangerhood. One which has to do with those who are fairly new to one another and another kind of strangeness or strangerhood that comes from with among people who are already close and who know each other rather well. Uh, but there is another kind of strangerhood. Sin makes us all strangers to God. And at some time we were all strangers to God, as well as being strangers to one another. And only the gospel of Jesus Christ can end all these three types of strangeness. 
It is only the gospel of Christ that brings us together in him, making the one to be part of the many and the many to be part of the one. So if you are here today and you are hearing all of this and you don't know this Jesus whom we worship and who gives us this joy and this strength in our lives, today is a good day for you to give your heart to God, to give your life to Christ and to be born again. In the APA, we believe that salvation is more than just about individuals. Salvation is about families. Salvation is about communities. Salvation is about nations. And the gospel that we preach is the gospel of the kingdom of God and of his Christ. And we believe that entry to that kingdom of God is through salvation in Jesus Christ by grace. And we are discipled through dis submission to the authority of scripture and the Holy Spirit. In the APA, we are training apostolic pastors who will be geographical, jurisdictional, historical, and prophetic. We believe that this name of black church or Asian church is only for a season. It will disappear because the revival is coming. It's going to cut across all the believers and all of us, whether we're black, we're white, we're brown, we're red, we're yellow. We will all be one in Christ. And so we are helping to prepare for that day. But we believe that the revival is coming. Can I hear another loud amen, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. So to you who are being ordained, if you are becoming more established in the land, we in the APA are doing our job. If you are becoming more relaxed with other native Europeans and beginning to have breakthroughs in your ministry relationships with them, we are doing our job. If you are becoming more involved in working with the other older and the emerging churches, then we are doing our job. If you are strong enough to discuss interfaith matters for the good of the community, then we are doing our job. If you are finding working with the local authority and the police and so on, easier than before we are doing our job we believe in the rapture but we are building for posterity the aspects of ministry that we emphasize in the APA are important for your role in pastoring the other native Europeans and also for those who are coming up in our churches now, they are a new generation. The young children who are coming into the churches now, even though their heritage may be outside this land, they are born here, they are part of this place, and they, you can't pastor them in the same old way. Many of them are of mixed heritage, and they, they have a different concept of life than their grandfather or their great-grandfather who first came to Britain. It has happened before we had churches who came here in the 50s and the 60s who found it difficult to cope with that change and lost their younger generations. And so we are believing God to raise you now as a new generation of fathers and mothers in the city, in the na region, the nation, and globally. Because Christianity is not actually a European religion. And so those of us of a minority ethnic heritage have to get rid of all the slavery mentality and the colonial mentality and take a hold of Christianity as being our own and to come into the place that God has called us and to preach the gospel in the way that God has called us to preach it. Reach the people, meet the people where they are. Don't sit there with a big signboard waiting for the people to come to you. Go to them, be like Jesus, meet the people. Go to them in their homes, in their fishing boats, by the side of the road. Bring Jesus to the people, hallelujah. This is our season. You know, Goliath is usually outside the camp. You're going to have to do something different to get rid of Goliath. You're going to have to go outside the normal. You're going to have to fight with different weapons. You're going to have to do something strange that looks strange to the people who have been fighting in the old armor. But that's the only way that Goliath is going to fall. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. 
Somebody has to go beyond the normal and do something on you. Help me tell your neighbor. Just tell him, tell him, say, do something unusual. <laughs> yes, yeah, do something unusual. I want to believe God with somebody that today marks the end of that season of strangeness and strangerhood for you in this land. I want to believe God with you for an end to strangerhood in your ministry, in your home, in your finances, in your relationships. I want to believe God that from today we will all walk together in this land as the body of Christ, as those he has called and sent forth to bring the glorious gospel of salvation in Christ to a hurting world. Listen to me. It is time for the glory of the Lord to be revealed. Yes. It is time for the hands that hang down to be lifted up, uh, for the feeble knees to be strengthened. It is time for Jesus to be lifted high across this land once again. Can I hear somebody shout, yes! And this is the time. Help me tell somebody near you. This is the time. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, but this is the time. Amen. So it is time to stop being strangers. Being strangers to God. Being strangers to one another. It is time that we believe what God has said. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows as a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. Amen.